This is Guy Burgess with the first of a series of five posts that explore what we think are realistic strategies for addressing the difficult challenges posed by authoritarian populism. Now, as you may remember from the preceding series of posts on authoritarian populism, uh, we tried to map out the basic dimensions of the conflict or the whole series of interlocking conflicts and the destructive dynamics that were at play. Uh, you may also remember that we're trying to focus in on uh, what I think is the essential dimension of the authoritarian populism problem. That is the tendency of aspiring authoritarians to try to gain power over the larger society uh, through a series of divide and conquer uh, political tactics. And we talked a lot about how this idea, which goes way back to ancient Macedonia, uh, but has been updated to the modern high-tech world in which aspiring authoritarians are really manipulating the population in ways that get us all to fight with one another and not oppose the kind of power grab uh, that they've been perpetrating. Now, in doing this, we want to apply this idea of massively parallel peace building that we've been outlining in a series of prior posts is really a strategy for dealing with complexity. And there are a couple of key ideas that are worth remembering here. Uh, first, that there's a, a general civic obligation. While we can't do everything, I think we all must do what we can to address the problem. And it's also worth looking not at, um, well, looking especially at the things that need to be done that aren't being done. Uh, there's a tendency with respect to a lot of these conflicts where everybody focuses on the same thing. Now, occasionally getting out the vote might be something that deserves that kind of attention, but really the problem is very multifaceted and you need to get a lot of people working on different parts of it. It's also important to find opportunities for scaling up wherever possible, because somehow we have to go from having really very small numbers of people who are interested in this problem of peace building and scaling up their influence to uh, affect a society with millions of people. And this is obviously not something that can easily be done over the short term. So we need to think long term as well as short term. We want to try to limit conflict problems wherever we can over the short term. But a lot of these problems are going to take a lot more time than that to fix. Um, and the other thing to keep in mind is that while eliminating all these destructive problems that we've been outlining in the previous post, uh, that's likely to be pretty impossible. But limiting them and limiting the damage is thoroughly realistic. And I hope you'll see with a lot of the ideas that I'm presenting here uh, that that makes sense. Um, now, again, go back to, again, an earlier set of posts where we laid out in detail uh, this notion of massively parallel peace building and how we'd organized a whole series of action steps into 10 major challenges. And we're going to try to build on that. And there is uh, certainly a lot more detail in these authoritarian populism action lists that's on the website. We're just going to try to focus on some of the most important things in this series of three posts. There's also other information on how to help address the problems and our things you can do to help blog. A lot of short, simple, but very important ideas. And there are also going to be a whole series of more detailed posts that follow this immediate series with more detailed information on strategies for dealing with escalation, for example. And this is just a list of some of the posts that you can look forward to seeing. Now, I'll make a small pitch for donations. Well, we obviously don't have all of this together yet. And the truth is that we're running out of money to pursue this. And we've got this down to a very small budget operation, but we need your help. And if you can spare some money, um, there's an easy donate option on the website, and we'd really appreciate it. The other thing that I should mention, is, and before we start explaining all of this, is that we're facing a bit of a chicken and egg problem. It's not quite clear what comes first and what comes second. But the truth is, you've got to do it all at the same time. That's, again, this massively parallel idea. So 
when you start thinking about step one and step two, the truth is that we have to do everything first, second, third. So now a couple of big ideas, and the whole thing is organized around um, a series of things, ideas, that could help people address various aspects of the problem. So to start with, we need, and we hope that this series of posts will help people understand that they need to get into the game, that it's not a spectator sport. And the way that it is set up and presented and merchandised really on the media as a spectator sport um, makes it a little bit hard. Uh, but it's not something that you just tune into and root for like you would a football game. You've really got to get involved. Um, and we have to take responsibility for how the game is played and for who wins and who loses. Um, the other thing that's important is to help people realize that at least with respect to aspiring authoritarians and populism and all that, the battleground is our hearts and minds. And there are a lot of very sophisticated games being played that are trying to convince each and every one of us to think about the conflict in a way that advances there and not necessarily your interests. So what we've got to do is realize that people are playing with our brains and what we think, and we need to make sure that the good guys and the good girls win, and our future depends on it. The other thing we need to help people realize is the importance of stepping out of the crowd. Right now, most everybody's caught up in this gigantic us versus them conflict, which, truth be told, is just digging the hole deeper and deeper. And we need some folks to stand up and say, no, no there, there's a better way. And that's going to take some courage. Um, it's also the sort of thing that will be much easier to do if you can find other people who are interested in the same sort of thing. You can work together, can provide one another with emotional support, share the workload, and start to build a little more of a support base and a reputation. And here we've been impressed with the list of organizations that a meta-organization called the Bridge Alliance has put together. And basically what these are, are, and you can go to their website, and we're not a member of this, I should be clear about that, um, but go to their website and it's a gigantic list of organizations that in one way or another are trying to find a way of bridging this us versus them divide. So again, going back to massively parallel peace building, how have we had it all arranged around different challenges? And so what we want to focus here is on the second challenge. And again, we're going to skip around a little bit uh, because of this chicken and egg um, problem. Uh, but if you're going to defend and promote democracy uh, from assaults from authoritarian wannabes, really, uh, there are a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. Uh, one, it's very important to separate the interests of grassroots citizens. Uh, these are members of political parties on the left and the right and independents in the center and the interests of their leaders. And sometimes the leaders are truly um, altruistic and trying to do the best they can to serve the interests of their constituents. And sometimes leaders have authoritarian aspirations and are basically trying to play the political uh, divide and conquer game in a way that would yield them more power. And one way or another, we've got to oppose that. So just because you oppose the leaders of the other political party because you think they're really trying some sort of power grab, that doesn't mean that you need to necessarily be out against the grassroots members of that group, who to a significant degree might uh, be being taken in by these same tricks that are affecting pretty much everybody on each side. The other thing to keep in mind is that there are two conflicts at play here. There's the conflict of all of us against these forces of dystopia that could be a authoritarian updated 
uh, version of 1984, it could be war, it could be just the failure of government to deal with common problems like climate change or infectious diseases. So it's the effort to oppose all of those dystopian futures. And it's not the same as the efforts to oppose the Republican or Democratic partisan agenda, uh, which is different. Now these, so uh, what we need to do is to find some way of putting a boundary around uh, partisan conflicts between the left and the right. And here I'm focused primarily on grassroots issues and to agree to at least cooperate enough to defend our common interests against, again, these dystopian threats of authoritarianism, war, or just a government that fails to function, anocracy. And what that requires is finding areas, again, in these left-right grassroots levels conflicts, ways in which we can coexist with our differences, tolerate our differences, cooperate on matters of mutual concern, and recognize that sometimes on some issues, the differences are going to be so deep uh, that simple toleration and coexistence won't work. It's not something we can accept. And for these cases, what we need is constructive confrontation skills. How can we debate and argue and fight about these things in, lead, in ways that lead to decisions which advance society as a whole? Having used a sports metaphor a bit earlier to argue that we shouldn't think about our conflict problems as a spectator sport, but that we should realize that we need to get in the game ourselves. In fact, we really don't have too much choice in the matter. But I also want to make clear that there are limits of this metaphor. We should not think of the game as a winning game in which the, point, the whole point of this is to accumulate some points on the other side and get closer to an outright victory. We need to think in terms of win-win opportunities and cooperative efforts to avoid lose-lose threats rather than thinking about everything as either a gain or a loss for our side. Now, obviously, there is a bit of a limit to this because at some level, the struggle against authoritarian rule and all of these dystopias that I've been talking about is a winning game. And we've all got to work together to advance the common good. As I mentioned at the start of this post, this is one of five posts looking at strategies for dealing with authoritarian populism. In the next post, we're going to look at the issues of hate and escalation as well as the importance of framing conflicts in constructive ways.